Okay, so today we are going to be starting a new Plain Explain series called the Microstakes Guide. I have been promising this for a couple of weeks now, um, but I have been really distracted with my with my Twitch and I've been chasing a bonus on stars, which whoever has been watching on Twitch will know about. If you haven't already followed me on Twitch, you can follow me on Twitch on the link below and catch me streaming on most days. Um, so today we're going to be starting with some 10 and L. Uh, but if anyone wants to see different stakes, then do let me know in the comments which ones you'd like to see. Um, I'm also going to be doing about half an hour today, but if you prefer longer or shorter videos, then do let me know for that as well. Uh, if you like the series, then please consider subscribing uh, and also dropping a like on the video if you find it helpful. Um, but for now, let's crack on with some hands uh, and see what happens. So um, we're going straight into the pool here, and I am going to have my HUD up uh, for these videos just because I think that a lot of decisions are... Um, quite hard focus that I make um, and I'm, I'm probably going to end up telling you that I'm why, I'm why I'm doing them based on my HUD anyway so I figure I may as well show the HUD um, we are going to open the King 5 we have our RNG here for when we need it uh, so we flop the, the nut flush draw on a board that the big blind is going to be struggling quite often on so we'll start with the small bet sorry not the nut flush draw but, but a very strong flush draw <laughs> Um, and we'll obviously bet the turn as well, which we're going to do with obviously like our ace X and very strong hands. Um, on this card, after our opponent calls twice and he's a green, I like to overbet um, just because we unblock like his two pair cooldowns, like ace four offsuit and all that stuff. And he is just going to be generally quite sticky. Um, so we're just going to overbet in this spot. Could consider going smaller, but I would I would certainly go smaller against a different opponent type. I'm not going to three bet here against a, a short stacker. It just doesn't play in when you're as well. Excuse me while well, I'll, I'll drink water at some points as well because my voice is suffering a little bit recently from all the streaming I've been doing. Um, the ace four offsuit on the button, we're actually going to mix and this sum will fold. Um, and versus the cutoff in the big blind with the 10-7 suit, we're just going to call all the time and we'll have to check fold this board. We'll also call all the time with this 5-6. And we'll have to fold all the time there as well. Um, we'll have to obviously check fold, check and fold this turn. And this this card, he's going to check back a lot of ace high, so we'll have to fold. I do have some stats. Um, check fold, sorry. I, I do have some stats from uh, the warm-up that I had just before I started. Um, wasn't very many interesting hands. But just wanted to get the brain flowing. Uh, I didn't really have like many spots to do much in, to be honest with you. I'm definitely not going to do anything but against this stack size. We'll just have to fold. And we'll open the King 5 off. Fold to any more action, but obviously people are overfolding their blinds, so we can certainly be opening there, unless we have a very good reason not to. So like I said, if you do want to see different stakes, anything from like 2 to 25 and L, and please let me know what you want to see. Um, I'm more than happy to to accommodate what's the most whatever the most popular requests are. I have a feeling that 10 will be most popular, and I've been playing a lot of it recently, so I've just decided to start with that. Obviously, there will be a lot of folding, but um, and I'm only playing two tables. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some interesting spots. But obviously, a lot of people are interested in in those small spots where we make, you know, um, a lot of the decisions that make you a lot of money. Obviously, a lot of my stream highlights videos, you're just going to see me you know, either having it or getting called or calling someone. So um, it's not as interesting. We're going to, we're going to raise the limper with the Jack 10. And obviously we'll be c this board. We'll go half pot. We need some protection. Um, so we'll start with that. And versus min raise, we're going to have to continue. We also have a 10 of diamonds. 10 diamonds blocks some of his draws, but it also gives us a backdoor flush draw as well. And over here, we're going to start with a small bet against this opponent with top set. If it was a drier board, I might consider checking to him. Um, on this turn versus check raise and then a big, big turn barrel, I think we're just going to go ahead and fold at this point. We could be completely dead. Um, and while our hand is still okay, uh, our opponent, you know, is representing a stronger hand than us. He can also have limped with like a, a threes or threes or fives or something. And I do think our opponents aren't going to be doing too much bluffing with that line. So we're just going to overfold to that. We're going to have some better hands anyway, guys. We can definitely have some flushes and stuff. So um, we bet this turn. 
I ran a cord again. We could have gone slightly bigger, um, but I didn't want him to fold it. I didn't want to fold out any flush draws. And I think on this river, um, we could consider uh, jamming or we could consider checking. Uh, I think our opponent, if he did have a flush draw, he will have to obviously go with that as a bluff as well. And we're going to induce against this kind of opponent quite often. He's going to be very sticky, but um, it wouldn't have mattered what we did in this, on this occasion. But I do think he's going to call with an ace and probably jam an ace himself anyway. Um, and then... I should have opened that 10-9, sorry, um, if it folded to me. He is going to uh, obviously jam or, and both, ja both jam and call with an ace anyway, probably. He's not like that kind of player that's not likely to check back uh, with an ace. It's obviously a very good turn card for me. We're just going to fold the ace out here with no spade. Um, but yeah, case can be made for jamming, uh, but I think if he's going to jam, if he's going to bet all his aces anyway, and then obviously he might not bet all in, but he would bet an amount where he'd be very find it very difficult to fold to an all-in because it would be such a small amount. And he's not going to check back an ace, I don't think. Um, it's very close, that decision, I think. But I think uh, going with a check and getting some of his hearts and like broken straight draws to go all-in is, is going to be the best way to play it. Uh, so with the queen-10 with no heart, we're, we're just going to go ahead and give up on this board. Uh, I don't think our opponent's going to have many folds here. He's going to be connecting quite well from the big blind and, and we just don't have any real equity to continue to, to continue um with a with a double guard shot here we're going to go with the bet and we also have a backdoor flush draw we're not going to bet here always so we're going to size up a little bit big blind is going to be doing obviously just fine on this board um on this turn we're going to overbet. we have obviously still the double gut shot um we have an overcard. our opponent's going to have some like nine eight nine seven six seven that can't really withstand this kind of bet size. We can also do hit this with our straights. Um, with this action, um, we're definitely not going to three bet, but I certainly don't want to fold. We're very deep against this opponent here, um, which makes it even more attractive to call. Obviously it's pocket eights anyway, but we could consider calling them maybe even some smaller pairs. Um, with the eight of clubs here, we're definitely not going to do any raising. Uh, our opponent is going to have obviously some over pairs, but with this big bet sizing that's actually quite interesting hopefully this opponent stays in this opponent staying in would have been obviously best because he's going to be over calling a lot um but with this texture and obviously us locking up the board over pairs are still gonna be very happy on most turns and we have an eight of clubs as well which is blocking some draws it's a very good turn card because he's now going to continue obviously with all of those and some extra draws too all of those over pairs and some extra draws too um so we're obviously thinking about getting the rest of the money and now we are very deep so we may need to place a raise in on this turn we are going to have some bluffs uh, against pot though i think we're just going to go ahead and call um if we raise this pot bet i think we look very very, very strong obviously we're not folding on any river anyway um if he has like queens plus then a lot of rivers are going to be quite safe for us he's going to fold a lot of bluffs here as well if we raise so i think we're just going to start with a call and he could obviously have something like ace king of clubs um ace queen of clubs lots of club draws here because remember we didn't three bet so he's got all of those strong club draws his overpairs are going to have a hard time to fold on this river if he does check, and I obviously will decide to bet. I can have some flushes too, obviously, but he did bet pot on the river. So, sorry, he did bet pot on the turn. So I should be folding on a paired board quite a lot of my flush draws. So he may feel quite comfortable here to bet with overpairs as well. And obviously we have a very easy jam. And if we're going to get called, it's going to be by, you know, pocket aces. And his best call down is going to be overpairs with a club. Uh, so we'll go all in, obviously. Uh, on this turn, we uh, obviously called the big blind and, and we'll bet this turn after he checks behind. We could consider checking because the king obviously is going to be much better for him than me, but we can also bet here with like 7-8 and stuff. Our opponent's run out of time here. I think he may have been able to call with more time. Uh, I think we played our hand as, as well as we could have done. The club may not have been a good card, but I do think he'll expect me to fold the turn, like I said, a lot with... Um, with two clubs when he pots into a, into a paired board. I don't think he would have folded a flush, obviously. I think he probably folded an over pair. Unless he... I think he probably folded an over pair that, that didn't have a... Uh, didn't have a club in it. But he may have called with a bit more time. He used a lot of his time back on the turn. Uh, this guy's asking me if I'm a streamer. I'm not actually going to reply at this point, just because I'm making a video. Um, and I have a feeling some of my hotkeys will kick off if I start typing. Uh, so we'll definitely bet this turn after he checks behind. 
No, he's questioning Marvini, really, but I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to respond to this one, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm very concerned about lots of different screen things popping off. Hopefully he doesn't time back the whole way down to get an answer from me. Sorry, man. I would love to. I always reply to people usually. If I see him again, I'll, I'll <laughs> in like tonight or something, I'll, I'll say, I'll say something. So we are, like I said, going to be going for about half an hour. Definitely follow King Eight. Uh, Queen Six is going to be, it's going to be a fold. We'll open the Jack Ten. And top pair. Um, we're always going to treat one big blind as a uh, as a check. Uh, so if I would have bet, so if I would have um, bet, then I'll raise. And if I would have just checked, I would I would just call. Uh, unless I really have a very 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 bad hand, then I would just go ahead and and fold. Um, but with any obviously decent equity, we'll just treat it as a check and, and call along. Obviously. So guys, if you do enjoy the video and you find it helpful, please consider subscribing. There is going to be a lot more of these in the future, uh, and drop a like as well if you if you uh, if you do like the video. It does help me out quite a lot, I think. <laughs> I don't really understand it just yet, but I know that it helps. Uh, so we defended the queen six, which is standard, um, and this guy seems on the nittier side. I don't expect him to bet this flop without some good reason, and obviously we don't really have any reason to continue ourselves anyway. So we'll just go ahead and fold. Seems very reasonable. And from the cutoff, the queen nine off is just about not in, and we'll definitely fold jack ten to a button open. Sorry, you can hear my voice feeling slightly hoarse. I do, I do a lot of streaming at the moment. It's definitely taking its toll. Fold the six three and the six ten. I say it's no good, and jack four as well. Uh, versus limp we'll, we'll make sure we tag him we're tagging everyone um wherever we can if we see someone with less than a full stack they'll they'll become green if we see someone do something we don't agree with then we'll make them yellow to show that we've, we've seen them do something questionable and if we see someone do something very bad we'll, we'll make them a, we'll make them a pink um so against this we have nothing to do but fold and we'll definitely just in this small of a pot we don't we don't want to be doing anything but just checking and trying to get showdown obviously not trying to get showdown we don't really care if we get showdown or not but you know what i mean we're never going to win that hand, basically. We'll fold the 5-4. It's no good versus hijack open. I mean, there are definitely going to be some ranges that include it. Um, mine got up to 6-5. So we're going to open the, the king jack uh, under the gun. It's not my favorite thing to open, but it is in there. And obviously with this guy jams, we'll have to call. It's not really a jam though. It's not even enough for a three bet. So 10-5 um, against the min raise will we'll defend. Suited, we would definitely fold to a, a larger size. And we'll make sure we're tagging people as we go. Um, against this sizing, I think we're not really going to do any improving. I would rather just fold. It's not the kind of board I was looking for when I called with getting the good price. And we'll also call here with a queen six versus min raise. And another very easy fold. Um, we could consider betting. We'll wait to hear the truth one more time from our opponent. If he does check again, we'll take a stab because um, we're not going to win at showdown. Um, but if he was to call here, obviously, then we'll be done with the hand. Uh, but I do think a lot of green tags are going to do lots of double checking there and they're never really going to be doing a lot of calling when they do. They do play, play fairly straightforward in those spots from my experience. Um, six seven from the button offsuit is not going to make it. We are mixing nine eight offsuit, pure folding. Um, pure folding eight seven offsuit. Pocket fives will certainly be opening from here. Uh, versus a hijack open, we're actually just going to pure fold here. I know it's very tempting to to try and flop a set, but 
Uh, we're definitely going to three bet and get it in against this guy. Um, we don't want to go like super big, even though we're out position because he, you know, he really can't do anything but but fold to like a larger sizing. He might be tempted to call for just six more, and obviously we have a pretty decent hand. So we opened up the jack six on the bottom, um, which we're going to be doing always, and. Um, our ace 10 offsuit, we're going to be mixing between call and raise, and this time we're going to be raising. We'll start with the call with our jack six, but we're starting not to be very happy about it, certainly against the big blind range, and this is a turn that we're just definitely going to be giving up on. And we'll, we'll try to show it down if we can, but I don't think there's going to be many runouts that we're going to win on. My stats do look nitty, but I really haven't. It's a very small, very small sample, obviously. I gen they generally level out at like 23, 20, 10, somewhere around that region, give or take one, two. Um, but I think when the when the pool is a lot pinker and greener for me, I generally have nittier stats because I'm generally not going to be opening as wide. And there does seem to be quite a few in there today. We're obviously going to be opening both of these. Um, against... Against the cutoff three bet with ace king off, we're actually going to mix. Um, and with the the jacks, we have actually an interesting spot as well. So we'll mix this ace king, and we're going to be we're going to be mostly four betting. But now that we four bet, we'll certainly have to be going all in, especially against the green. And here, it's actually a tough spot. Um, we're mainly going to be just calling anyway against this guy, and I think that we're going to get like two callers even if we make it quite a large sizing. So we're just going to set mine in this spot. I think it's close though. We'll start with a small C bet with the Ace King. And on this turn, I think we can consider checking. Um, we can get our, we have with the Ace of Spades especially, we can consider, consider checking here. I think getting our opponent to, 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 to go a little bit crazy would be the best thing to do. We may choose to like check here with like Queens and Aces, and just Queens and Kings as well, sorry. So... It makes sense to have some checks. We're definitely going to check like aces as well. And against bet, we're definitely going to go all in. We're going to bet this turn with the jacks. We checked the flop, obviously, to the razor. Um, Pre-flop is super optional, but I think with with people, that's going to be like quite bad. It's going to be doing lots of calling and putting us in tough spots unless we flop sets post-flop. Unfortunate that no one got there. And we'll be all in with our ace king. And oh, yeah, this is the kind of, kind of thing we're going to see a little bit. Hopefully we can hold here. And we do, and he cashed out, which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, very profitable spot there. Uh, I don't think he would have called a jam, although he may well have done. But I do like to do a lot of checking against opponents like that in that kind of spot. Opening up the ace, sorry, isolating a limp with the ace queen, and we're going to be three betting with our queens and certainly going with our hand as well. Um, on nine, eight, ten against this guy, I'd rather check core than bet because if we bet on this board, we're not going to do lots of betting anyway. But if we do bet on this board, we're going to get raised like quite a lot against the limper. We don't really know what he's going to... It, it doesn't really make much sense to try and con construct his limping range because we don't really know what it's going to be like. Um, but now I think we can bet here, get some folds from like pocket fours, fives. He's not going to fold sevens, but we do have some good equity against that hand. And versus the low jack RFI, we're going to be pure three betting with our ace four. Do get a fold on the right hand side, which is nice. So yeah, like I said, guy's going to be going for about 30 minutes here. On this board, our opponent's not going to have like the most seven six x. Neither are we, but we have all we have all the overpairs. And when he's going to have a lot of floats for a small sizing, I think we should go just slightly bigger here to buy some folds. Um, the turn is actually quite interesting. Uh, I think that Queen's going to fall better some frequency. This card is going to be way better for us than him, especially when he floats. So we are going to bar again here. We also block Ace Queen that floats as well. But the card's definitely going to be better for us than it is for him. We're very, very deep here as well, so he'd be worried about some river barrels. And I think against Core, we'll probably find a give up on this river. Uh, but I do think that stuff like eights through jacks is going to be in a very difficult spot on that turn. So we certainly want to be be, be quite aggressive on cards that are going to be quite good for us. Um, it's important to understand which cards are going to be good for us and which aren't. We'll talk about that spot in just a second after I play this ace jack. So against the, the cutoff um, with ace-jack on the small line, we're going to be doing some mixing, and on this occasion we'll be 3-baying. Uh, 
yeah, so the queen, um, if he's going to ever, and we're going to we'll just talk about this one first. We're going to see about our whole range here. The board's going to be quite good for us. Um, betting small makes sense, but I just want to go slightly bigger. And versus call, we're not necessarily like, Super unhappy. Our hand's going to be good quite often. If he had like tens or a jack himself, we could still be winning. Uh, the king is going to be more on our range than his, and we do block king jack suited, which is nice. We'll certainly have to call against that bet. This could be uh, a jack trying to buy a cheap showdown. It could also be a king, and we'll definitely be reevaluating the river. And we'll be checking. Should he jam, we'll, we'll have a fold here. And that makes a lot of sense but against the turn sizing obviously the flop's going to be really good for us so we're just going to be betting with everything um if we're going to check a hand that one makes a lot of sense uh, but i'd rather just bet everything there once he calls it's going to be a tough spot for us uh we do beat some stuff even when he bets the turn for that sizing i think he should probably do some checking back though and um, we decided to see bet this board with the ace deuce and then um, without picking up any further equity, I think we're just going to check fold. And we'll call pure here with the sevens in position. And we'll fold the ace deuce. We'll be continuing against almost every sizing here. And when he checks, he it does seem to be on the nittier side. His c bet is 14, so it doesn't mean that he's necessarily going to be... Um, having only over cards here when he checks, but it doesn't mean he's going to be giving up a lot, I think. So we are going to bet to protect our hand. If he has over cards that, that want to call here, then, you know, he's going to have to pay to see this turn. And I think with this lower C bet, we are going to expect to get check raised here some, but we'll just be folding against that. That's a very, very bad turn for us. Obviously, there's a lot of hands that he floated the flop with that now are going to be winning. Uh, I know my main line here is going to be try to get to showdown if we do experience um, some bets from our opponent. We're never going to be betting this turn. Um, if we do experience some bets for our opponent, well, not with this hand, but we are going to be betting this turn, but not with this hand, um, then we'll be just folding. But there's a very low chance that we have the best hand at this point, basically. We could consider threading in some 10s as a check back as well. Um, and we'll be folding to that, as explained. So the king nine suited is going to be a pure call against the cutoff. And we'll start with the check. According to my ranges, it's a pure call. And we'll float with the king high and a backdoor flush draw. And on this turn, we're going to be doing too much struggling. So king ten suited, um, we're going to be doing some calling and some folding. And on this occasion, we're going to call. This guy's quite an aggressive three bet. We could even consider mixing in the top like 20% as a four bet. Interesting flop. And against snap check, we're definitely going to bet the turn. We also have some equity when called as well. Um, in this spot, this is interesting. Um, I think we're going to call letting this guy in as well. We do have some potential to make some nut hands. We would have preferred him to come along, but as he doesn't, it's okay. And we bang off a straight on this river. Um, our opponent can have some flushes. What we're probably going to do in this spot is do some bet folding. Um, but it's going to be very tough because he can have king 10 as well. Um, he's not going to be super happy about it. this. If he does have a 10, obviously he's going to call, but not much 10x is going to not bet flop and then just call turn. We're going to float on the left and we'll explain that in a second. And he does fold. Uh, but we would have been finding some barrels on some non... On some non... Um, straight completing rivers. Uh, so we are going to have some queen x here guys and we're going to just have to bet um it's pretty much like the worst hand we're going to get here with if he has an ace he may well have bet the turn he is going to sometimes check back but if he had like pocket jacks here then we're going to extract some folds here so we're just going to go for a, a medium sizing uh, we don't want to check here and let him win with jacks and when we call the flop we're not going to have like that many we're going to have a lot of queens we're going to have a lot of queens so we, we, we do red Incredibly rep a lot of queens, so makes a lot of sense. So we we three bet here at versus under the gun against uh, this player here, and he donks for seventy five percent or more, and we're just gonna have to pure call here. Nothing to do other than call. 
The turn's interesting. We do block the club. Uh, we do block like the nut straight, which is really good. Um, but the only suited combo that we block, oh, we do we do block actually both suited combos of. We just don't block some. Um, we don't block all the bluffs. We we have we unblock the jack jack of diamonds. Uh, sorry, we we block the the jack of clubs um, bluffs that he's going to have, which is a shame. But we're certainly going to not be able to fold this turn without a heart. And we're going to call this uh, with the tens over here on the left. Versus Jam, we're going to have a very interesting spot. We're probably going to find a fold, but we're not going to be very happy about it. Yeah, um, we're going to bet this turn after our opponent checks back on the left. Um, so interesting spot here. Um, obviously, he can have hearts. We do block um, flushes. We do block Jack Queen. This may even be a hand that we just have to go with. Um, he's going to have a lot of uh, overcards that like overcard flush draws that we completely unblock. We do block the backdoor flushes that got there. We do block queen jack suited. So unfortunately, this is going to be one of our best cooldowns. I would like to find a fold, but I don't really see how I can have possibly a better cooldown than this. So we are going to go with it. I just have a boat on this occasion, but I think our call is reasonable. Um, on this river, we're going to check. We did time bank for a while there, but we bet this turn. Um, and then on the river, I think we have just a check potential call with the with a ten of clubs. Um, our opponent's not going to... He, he, he's going to have 9-8. Like, sometimes we don't know too much about him in the jack's hand. The, the problem is that we do block some straights that want to lead. We, and then if he wanted just to start leading with the hearts, then my, my initial instinct would always be generally to fold to that kind of action. Uh, but I do think it's very important to think about the kind of hands that we're going to want to call with. Um, what is the best hand that we get there to call with? Obviously, that. I don't mean like pocket tens because obviously we're calling them pocket tens, right? But uh, what's our best hand to call with that gets there? Uh, so is, Jax is even better than Aces there because we block Queen Jack. He's going to want to lead, and we block two combos of Queen Jack. Um, so Queen Jack is going to want to lead. Obviously, he's going to be leading like some two pairs and some Queen Jacks. Obviously, the the, the houses are are unlikely because um, there are the two eights and a nine on the board already. So he's going to have less full houses. We're going to have some sevens, and we're going to have some some flushes here obviously um just thinking about whether we want to overbet he would check some like 10x and some 7x um overbetting i think is reasonable so we are going to do it the ace queen b3 bet against a short stack all we're thinking about is getting it in and we'll start with a small bet in position uh, on the turn we'll, we'll bet again fairly small and we're looking to not fold to any action obviously if he jams will call and then the river will be going all in on most any river And that seems like a pretty good one to go with. If he has a random four, then that's that's just the way of the world. We do split, and his play is reasonable, but obviously he's going to be calling down with like ace jack and ace ten as well, and maybe even some worse hands as well, being the type of player he is. So yeah, the jack's hand, guys. Um, I think the most important thing to take away about the jack's hand is, yes, our opponent's going to want to lead with a lot of made hands on the flop, um, but he's also going to have like he may do a lot of check raising with flush rolls, but when someone has a donking range, it's really hard to attribute which hands he's going to want to put in there because we don't have one. So we have to think about what kind of hands he's going to want to do that with. Our, our call down with a jack of clubs, blocking the backdoor flushes, blocking the straights. Um, it's just going to be one of the best hands that we can have to, do, to call down with. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to defend the eight, seven here in the big blind. And we're going to obviously call versus flop bet. I could maybe do some raising with the eight of clubs as well. We don't really need to as much. Probably gonna have to call a turn bet as well. But considering the board's gonna connect quite well with our range, our opponent shouldn't be doing lots of betting without good hands here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold um, sometimes at least. So maybe let's half the time fold and we'll fold this time. 10-9, not quite, not quite good enough. Sometimes I'll I'll do that just to so I'm not calling too often with like all my combos of eight seven off. So I think his when he bets twice on that board against our range that interacts quite well with that board, then you know we have to give him some respect. And and just like with the jacks hand, people are generally going to be quite value heavy when betting. So just one of those things, guys. Um, so. 
with, uh, with in the in the hijack versus the three bet, we're, we're going to be pure folding the, this hand here, uh, the queen nine, and we'll be starting small with the jack, with the jacks with the jack of diamonds. We're going to get lots of folds with from non diamond hands, um, and very cheaply as well. And we get to check back some turns as well. Um, if you had like an ace, then we're going to have lots of equity. We get to see all five cards quite often when we do bet small the flop because he's going to check a lot of turns. So we can do lots of checking back on on the turn, and we still obviously have a lot of equity with our with our diamond. Um, against this cutoff open with the fives, we are going to be doing a little bit of raising as well. So we'll twenty five percent raise this hand, and this time we're just going to call. And on this board, we are super dead. But yeah, the main thing about the jacks hand that I want people to take away is that even if you don't call the river, which I think is reasonable, like I didn't really want to call the river, um, but you know, it's just really hard for me to have better call downs there. If I'm folding there with that particular combo, then I'm probably just pure exploit folding because it's pretty much like one of the best hands I'm going to have to call down with that isn't pocket tens. So yeah, and even pocket tens, I might consider raising flop. Not not convinced, but um, yeah, we want to at least think about why we might want to call and why our hand makes sense as a call. And you can obviously see from if you want to go back and listen to the analysis of why I think it makes sense as a call, considering what blockers we have. I think it's a very fair call. Um, Ten and L, you could maybe exploit fold everything, but our opponent can easily have some overcard flush draws that we block. Um, so you know. We don't we don't want to assume how he's going to be constructing his his whole range. I managed to green myself, which is quite funny. <laughs> um, so versus call call up here and this guy having a very short stack, we're just going to have to check. Um, this guy's not going to be doing a lot of folding on this turn. Neither is this fellow. Uh, he's going to have a lot of ten x. He's definitely going to check. Um, should the, should he check again? We could consider betting, but I think against these this player type here. I don't think we should. I think he's certainly going to check back a jack. This guy, will, this guy will certainly check a jack on the river as well, rather than bet, and he will definitely bet a ten. So easy fold, but definitely betting the flop. Queens on the left. Big blind's going to have some eights. Uh, we have a couple, and we obviously have the overpair advantage. We're going to start with a bet, and the aces will open on the on the bun. We're getting three bet, I'm obviously going to go for a, a four bet. We're not going to be four betting this guy light uh, because he's shorter and he's weaker. Um, but we are going to be falling on this occasion. We will definitely fall bet slightly smaller uh, versus his stack size. And in position, we don't. We want to put his whole range in a tough spot. Um, we've got a tough spot on the left, and we're going to have to start with a call. But uh, like I said, our opponent's going to have a lot of eights, and this board is going to be very under check raised. Um, stuff like five, six, spades, and diamonds and clubs are all in there, though, so we do definitely have to call. We can certainly consider folding this turn, though. Um, against this guy, we're going to bet the, the flop. And just jam the turn. He shouldn't have like sixes and threes and fours because he three bet and called. And on the turn, we'll definitely jam. Uh, against check, we're going to check back. Um, he can certainly still be trapping an eight, but if he has like five, six, I think he would continue betting with five, six of diamonds. But if he, ha if he has a, a raise that he's now giving up, then we, we don't really have much concern about many rivers. And our opponent folds on the right, which is fine. We could concede the, we could even consider checking back. But I think our opponent's just going to be stacking off quite regularly anyway. So checking back is a very reasonable. We're definitely going to check with the with the queens, and he had pocket sixes, which he's just trying to protect with and get to showdown for cheaper, which he did manage. But on the on other runouts, he obviously would not have done. But yeah, the aces we we were going to be pretty much uh, having him. Having him dead. The only reason I jammed is because of the player type. I definitely consider checking back um, against some other opponent types. But once he calls flop, and it's not like my sizing was very small, I expect him to be just having lots of like pocket nines and eights that are definitely not folding or like tens. Um, I don't think he is really going to float that that much versus that sizing. So I expected him to be more value centric and be able to call. Um, and I didn't want I didn't want like a queen to roll off if he had pocket tens, you know. So. Or like pocket eights or nines or whatever he ended up having. So I think our jam is reasonable, but you can certainly mix in some some checkbacks against some other opponent types there. The problem is we're not going to be in that spot against other opponents, like good opponents, because they're going to be um, 
full stacked. So it's a, it's a bit of a weird situation. And obviously all our sizing is going to be different. Uh, so we are going to wrap up, guys. We're going to start sitting out. Uh, we've played for 30 to 35 minutes, and I think that's a good amount for our first video. Um, please do let me know how you feel. If you've enjoyed this, how you feel about the series, and um, what you'd like to see from the series. If you want to see different stakes, different lengths of videos, I'm more than happy to accommodate um, whatever the most popular suggestions are. Starting with a, a three bet with the King-10 suited. And versus call on this board. Um, our opponent's going to have some, some Queen X for sure. We are too. Uh, we're going to not be betting here always. I don't think. Just deciding whether I want to see about this board or trick behind. Let's do it half the time, and this time we're going to bet. I don't expect our opponent to raise even with a queen here. But we definitely want to bet some time so that we can get some just pure folds from like ace high and stuff. I don't think ace high is going to be very happy about calling there. We'll fold the ace seven off suit. We'll fold here again. Looks like a6 suited maybe our last hand. We're definitely not going to do anything against under the gun open. And that should be the last hand. Ace 5 off suit is not going to be in. Ace jack off suit is though. And this should certainly be our last hand. Versus 3 bet we're not going to be doing a lot of continuing. Depending on the positions. And versus the uh, cutoff three bet, we're going to be pure folding with um, ace jack, and we'll be mixing some four betting with ace queen off. For this occasion, we're going to be folding, and that'll be that'll be that. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of my Plain Explained series, um, the Micro Stakes Guide. Uh, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. Um, if you think I can improve in any way, please let me know. Um, but for now, that's going to do it. Uh, I really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, follow me on Twitch if you haven't already. Subscribe to my YouTube as also. And look forward to some more videos like this in the future. Take care of yourselves, guys. Uh, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.